Hello everyone, that's tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. First of all, in today's video, and then we'll have a look at weather next month, CFS V2. I've also had an update in terms of centering temperature for the ter first time in quite a few days, so we'll have a look at that and see how we uh, stand. As we come to the final day, of course, of February, it's the last day of February, and it's also the last day of meteorological winter. Now, I know there's a little bit of controversy about that because um, astronomically, winter doesn't end until uh, the 21st of March. But um, meteorologically, it is the 1st of December through to the final day of February, whether that's 28th or 29th February, depends on the year, of course. Um, so statistically, meteorologically, it is the final day of winter today, spring begins tomorrow. So, um, so it's very useful to have a defined period uh, for these seasons. The weather doesn't um, doesn't uh, stick to that, of course, though sometimes you get cold weather going on well into March, or even into April. Other times, you'll have spring starting up in January. So uh, it just depends on the year. But the final day of winter today, and we'll see what's around the corner for March in a moment. Before I get on with that, just to say about the ads, there's links to articles on all the pages. If you have a browser, which is a click through links, you're going to help us to pay for our website. And thanks very much for doing that. It's also video ads for those pages, which only content when you watch them, you can close them back up again. It does help to pay for gas It's Just starting off with a couple of uh, pics that uh, I've seen. So uh, this was emailed to me by David in um, Cheshire uh, yesterday. Uh, this was a rather wintry looking park uh, somewhere in Cheshire uh, yesterday. Thanks, Dave. David for emailing uh, that through. This um, was posted at Gazzo's comment box this morning. This is from Tom. Uh, I think Tom is somewhere up towards Sheffield. Uh, so a little bit of a dusting of snow there. And then uh, this was posted by Scott, who is uh, somewhere towards Manchester, I think. Uh, and it's quite heavy snow, actually, um, this morning. There was a little bit of a snow event across some parts of northwestern England this morning. I think it's all gone uh, now. But uh, there was some snow around earlier on this morning. Big thank you to everybody for posting those pictures in the comment box at Gazovis and also emailing, emailing them to me. If you've got any weather pics that you'd like featured in the videos, you can always post them at the comment box at Gazovis or you can email them to gazovis at gmail.com. We're always happy to feature those. Uh, pictures when we have time to uh, do so. Right, so uh, the latest in terms of uh, precipitation is that we've still got uh, heavy rain moving in across England and Wales at moment. It's largely dry for Scotland, although these showers are a little bit wintry across uh, Scotland, but the main rain is actually down across England and Wales. There's some quite heavy bursts uh, mixed in there as well. Let's have a look at precipitation types, see if there's any snow in with that. It doesn't appear to be much snow now, so I think most of the uh, wintriness that we had early on this morning has turned back to rain. See, the dew points have generally gone a little bit above freezing um, where we've got this precipitation. So it will never snow if the dew point is uh, above freezing. It will only snow if the dew point is at or below freezing. So most of this precipitation is now back to rain. But we see there is quite a bit of uh, heavy rain in there. So um, there might be hail and thunder mixed in again this afternoon, possibly, as we can see, longer spells of rain as well. The shells are banding together a little bit as well. So uh, quite, a, um, quite a lively afternoon coming up uh, once again. Uh, so this is how the temperature is standing for February. It's turned out to be a very mild uh, month once again. So uh, provisionally up to yesterday, 27th of February, we stand at 6.3, which is an anomaly of 2.5 degrees above average. It's been a very mild uh, February. That goes along with a very mild December. January was a lot cooler. Uh, coming out around uh, average, and if we was to compare it against 81 to 2010 average, it would actually be it was actually a bit colder than average um, in uh, January. But December and February coming out very much. It's been a really long time since we've had a cold February. I can show you the um, CET uh, index going right way back to 1659 here. So assume we come out in the low sixes uh, for this. Um, month, February 2017. We're going to be on a par with 2014, which came out at 6.2, and uh, 2011, which came out 
at 6.4. So we're going to be on a par with those years. To find uh, February that was even warmer than that, we have to go back to 2002, quite a while ago now, which came out with a century in temperature of uh, 7.0. The last time we had a really cold February, we did have quite a cold one in uh, 2010. That came out at 2.8. And then 1996 came out at 2.5 in February. Uh, but the last time we had a really cold one was back in 1991, which came out at 1.5. Uh, and I'm sure you remember it very well. We had the, um, one of the coldest spells of the 20th century during the early part of February 1991 was severely cold easterly winds and blizzards on the 7th and 8th of February 1991 blasting all the way in from Russia and then before that the last time we had a sub-zero February was in 1986 which came out very very cold at minus 1.1 and that's the last time we had a sub-zero February Um, and that was quite dry. It wasn't a lot of snow with that. Some eastern parts of the country did have a bit of snow. But that was just very, very cold day after day. Severe frost by night. Staying below freezing all day and very dry. So I'm sure some would think that's quite a, quite a boring month. But there was a little bit of snow in there, especially in the east. So it's a very long time since we had a cold, uh, a really cold February 1991 or a sub-zero February 1986. I'm sure we're due for one before too much longer, but of course when that is, uh, there's no way of telling. So um, this is the, uh, looking forwards now, we've dealt with uh, going back in Bath, looking forwards, this is the um, GFS Ensemble chart for the next couple of weeks in terms of the upper air temperatures, the red line is the 30 year temperature average. I showed you this yesterday and essentially for the next week we're going to be hovering around average. At times we go a little bit above, at times we go a little bit below. Very unsettled spell coming up over the next week. I think overall it's going to be a little bit on the cooler side actually. Um, So uh, when you're around average with these upper air temperatures in the winter, very often you come out a little bit above average. But now we're moving into spring. Um, you have to start thinking at times when we're seeing the upper air temperatures around average. It actually it might be coming out a bit cooler. And when you get to summer, of course, if you're average with the upper air temperatures, um, depending on the air mass, you could either be significantly warmer than average down on the surface if it's a high pressure scenario. Or you can actually be quite cool if it's a low pressure and westerly wind type scenario. So uh, the upper air temperatures tell you a lot in winter, but in other seasons, you do have to read between the lines a little bit. Now, as we go through into the second half, uh, or I should say the second week of March, which is this period just here, we find, again, lots and lots of scatter appearance. So there are several members of the GFS ensembles that look really very mild, but several members that, uh, or I should say several members that look cold, and several members that look very mild. So it's hard to decide for too much. There's a lot of uncertainty, I think, as we're going through into the second week of March. It looks about a 50-50 chance between having it quite mild in the second week of March or actually potentially having it quite cold. What we can say is that there's a good signal for unsettled weather. So uh, precipitation today, more coming up tomorrow, and then at the end of the week and into the weekend, that looks very wet there, and more precipitation then appearing as we go through into the second week of March. So we are in a protracted spell of unsettled weather after what's been really quite a dry uh, winter. It looks like we're going to make up for it a bit in uh, March. Temperature normally for the next week. This backs up what I was saying. This is going from the 28th of February through to the 8th of March. Coming out a little bit colder than average. So although the upper air temperatures there were hovering around the 30-year temperature average, actually on the surface, it does look as though it's going to be a little bit colder than average for the next week. Precipitation anomalies are looking like this. It is a little bit drier than average, interestingly, for Scotland and significantly wetter than average for England and Wales. So that's quite unusual. Uh, and that is something that we've seen this winter as well. It's generally been milder and drier during the winter for Scotland and colder and wetter for England and Wales, which is quite a flip on what we uh, normally see. 
Uh, this is the 10-day accumulated precipitation chart from the GFS model, uh, from the website, the Weather Outlook. Uh, you can find a link to Weather Outlook on the links page, by the way. So, it backs up what we've just seen. Scotland coming out with uh, precipitation of around 20 millimetres accumulated over the next 20 days. Not too much rain away from the far northwest, but down across England and Wales, looks much wetter. In fact, this wave through North Wales and Northern England coming out with uh, accumulated precipitation of 80 to 100 millimetres. So, uh, quick calculation, 100 millimetres around 4 inches, 25 millimetres to an inch, of course. So, that's very significantly wet in the next 10 days across Northern England. It's not as dramatic as that further south and east, but 20 to 40 millimetres through the Midlands into south east England is uh, quite wet. So, just having a quick look at the generic charts, this is the GFS for Saturday, when we find a really deep area of low pressure to the southwest. That looks like it's going to be bringing a lot of rain to England and Wales to start the weekend. Drier but colder with those northeasterly winds in the north. Um, may clear off the low pressure a little bit into uh, sunny, but it's still very unsettled. I'd expect a lot more showers coming in with that. And then early next week, another bout of rains coming in off the Atlantic. But you notice pressure's rising a bit from the Azores to Spain and France. So that's time to bring up some slightly milder air, actually, into the south in the early part of next week. And then this looks a little bit better for southern parts in the middle of next week. We've got high pressure close to the south, but uh, in the north it still looks very unsettled up to there. It would be milder. The wind is coming in off the Atlantic from the more southerly part of the Atlantic, so that would be a little bit milder as well. The end of next week looks very unsettled and then we go into the weekend of the 11th and 12th of uh, March and it's turning increasingly unsettled. And notice pressure's trying to rise up across Greenland as well. If that comes off, it would turn the winds into the north and pull down a northerly to the middle part of March. The GFS is flirting with that at the moment. The E7F looking like this, really unsettled to start the weekend. Lots of wet weather. That continues with a deep area of low pressure centred over the top of the country on uh, Saturday. And then we go through to the start of next week and it's staying uh, really quite unsettled uh, at that point. Excuse me. And then we go through into the middle part of next week. It looks like it's staying unsettled even through to then. So this is Wednesday, the 8th of March, for example. We've got low pressure centred still right over the top of the country. So that little build of pressure that the GFS is going for, uh, for the south. The ECMDF doesn't see that as much. It looks like it's pretty cool and unsettled there in going into the middle part of next week. However, at the end of next week, the ECMDF does try and build a bit of pressure there. Uh, particularly to the south east. That could be quite pleasant. If it came off, you'd probably get temperatures going into the teens Celsius with that as we read to March. Uh, however, there's more low pressure downstream, and I think the days of this ridge would probably be quite numbered, and we fairly quickly go back into Atlantic gym weather. It looks an unsettled first week to 10 days uh, from the GFS. I can't see any way around that. And just seeing how long this might go on for, uh, for the rest of March, have a look at the CFS V2 for the next month. So these are 500 mm about high dominance, broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from today, 28th, through to the 6th of March. Looks very unsettled. We've got um, below average heights, which is low pressure, driving in from off the Atlantic. We have got some northern blocking. We've got high pressure up here. Uh, but it isn't in a position, really, to be producing much in the way of cold weather. However, because the jet stream is on a northwest south southeast trajectory, that's the reason it's, the reason it's a little bit cooler, even though it is unsettled. And for the anomaly overall, we've already seen it, it probably does come out a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, cooler than average. We go through to week two, which is the 7th to the 13th of March. The trough is lifting up to the northwest a little bit. We've got this uh, ridge building to the southwest. So this looks milder, if nothing else. We'd be getting the wind dragged up from the southwest with that. Again, still a lot of uh, above average heights, a lot of high pressure going on to the north. But again, as has been the case all winter, not really in a position to be producing cold weather. And for us, we're actually dragging up quite mild air from the southwest there. Uh, week three looks a little bit more interesting. This is the 14th through the 20th of March. Hinting at a cold snap here. We've got a below average heights to the north and east of the country. And the ridge is pulling out through the Atlantic going up towards Greenland. So this will get the winds certainly into the northwest, possibly even into the north. And that could be quite a lot colder there through that middle part of March. I say the GFS is flirting with this idea 
uh, potentially pulling down a cold northerly for the middle of March. So um, that could be a little bit of late blast of winter. And then we go through to week four, which is the 21st through to the 27th of March, more or less going towards the end of the month. Pressure's going up over Scandinavia then and to the east of us. Um, now, with this, we could either be dragging in a fairly chilly east-southeasterly wind, or we could be pulling up quite a mild, or maybe even fairly warm, southerly wind. So we might end March, uh, which does look like a very topsy-turvy month, but we could end March there. Now, really quite a warm note, quite a, uh, quite a notable early spell of uh, warm spring-like weather, which I'm sure a lot of us would be enjoying um, at the end of March if that came off. But it's a very long way out, four weeks away. And I think what we're going to focus on mainly is the unsettled weather that's coming up over the next week to 10 days. I think we are going to have really quite an unsettled start to March and possibly, only hints, but possibly cold northerly winds for the middle part of the month. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.